All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky, and let's do this. No! His laptop monitor stared back at him, black and empty. Don't you die on me, buddy. He jabbed his finger sharply at the screen. But the computer gave no response, looking well and truly dead. What the heck? Mino Kara pounded his fist on the table. This would be a worst case scenario, even if he weren't desperately pressed for time. Guess I'll just have to write by hand. He rummaged around inside his bag and pulled out a notebook. I can still do this, he shouted, doing his best to psych himself up for the task ahead. I will still do this. Uh, excuse me, sir. The waitress appeared timidly behind him. What? Minokara snapped, his pen still flying across the paper. Sir, if you could please quiet down. My damn computer just broke. I'm allowed to scream or two. Minokara was in a state of mind to be quiet. If it weren't for the deadline he was racing to meet, he'd probably have gone on screaming until he passed out. Your computer is broken, you say? The waitress peered at the monitor. Yeah, look, it just suddenly stopped displaying anything. Could it be that, ah, the battery's just dead? <laughs> Minokara sat boldly upright. That's it! The waitress flinched <laughs> as Minokara's finger jabbed toward her face. I hadn't considered that possibility. Hey, let me plug it in somewhere. There's an outlet right there, sir. She pointed at the outlet of Minokara's feet, making no attempt to hide her expansion, expiration. Minokara plugged in the power cable and the monitor sprang to life as normal. So, um, now that's sorted out, would you please be quiet, sir? Don't talk to me. You're interfering with my writing. Mirakawa's fingers had already begun dancing across the keyboard. With a sigh, the waitress disappeared into the kitchen. Oh yeah, now we're talking. His fingers picked up speed as he went about touch typing. The act of typing at a keyboard without looking at the keys. The aspiration of computer novices everywhere. A typical method involves placing the index fingers on the F and J keys with the middle ring and pinky fingers. Fingers resting on the A, S, and D or K and L and keys to either side from which all other keys are easily reached. With practice, a touch typist can instinctively hit the correct keys every time without looking. It, it, oh, that's something. I know somebody who can do that. The pros and cons of surveillance cameras. The, propri the proprietor of outdated electronic shop overseas high-tech camera system. Bent lamb at bogus weight loss drink sales demo. Bankrupted, bankrupted organizer remains undiscouraged. Now Amir Kara's spirits were riding high. His riding rode along at a brisk pace. Sir, it was the waitress again, her voice yanking Amir Kara right out of his soaring mood. Sir, now what? Has the President of the United States agreed to give me a one-on-one -on -one interview? The waitress eyes went wide with confusion. <laughs> huh? Because unless it's something that important, do not speak to me right now. But she was undeterred. Sir, please, if you could just be a little quieter. Mirakawa's fingers ceased their rattling across the keys. Just what sound do you have a problem with? All I've been doing is writing a copy. Um, well, 
the last while, actually, you've been talking while you write, sir. Talking. Minoru Kara tilted his head in confusion. Yes, sir, you've been talking about an electronic store and some bogus weight loss drink. I assume that's what you're writing about? Uh, you're saying I've been narrating my copy aloud while writing it? That's right, sir. Other customers sitting nearby were openly still. Well, so what? He snapped. He was red in the face now. You should all be delighted that you get to hear what I'm writing before the magazine goes to print. Well, actually, sir, one of our customers have been complaining. Complaining? <laughs> of all the nerve. Who was it? Where are they? Minoru Kara scanned the other patrons, many of whom were unsuccessfully trying to hide their laughter. It was me. It was the grumpy older fellow who'd been making the scene earlier. Focus diet fads, peeping security cameras. Reminds me of that sleazy tabloid four-star general gossip I hate so much. Oh ho, you sure seem to know a lot about it for something you hate so much. The man's face twisted up with scorn. Your behavior is bothering everyone in here, he said. Do you not understand that? No, I don't. Hmm. Guess a reporter who writes nothing but nonsense prefers nonsense in everything he does. Minorakara could feel his blood boiling. What was that? Go on, say that again. Oh, gladly. Nonsense, filth, cod swallop, flim flam. You bastard, how dare you? Minorakara stormed over to the man's table. Flim flam indeed. Bogus or insincere content. Few things anger Minokara more than reporters using dishonest means to create a story. Having his own work called Flim Flam would naturally make him blow his top. <laughs> he knocked over that dude. Just who are you calling Flim Flam? The other man stood up and glowered at Minokara's face. You, you early lack any manners or sense of decency for starters. I have plenty of manners and decency. Happen to have a deadline, Back. As if a flim flam artist like you has work ethic. Stop calling me flim flam. The waitress inserted herself between the two men. You meant gentlemen, please stop fighting. I deem that you remove this man at once. The older fellow barked. He's the one you should be kicking out. Minoru Kawa shot back. By now he was ready to go for this guy's throat. Please, the waitress pleaded. Both of you return to your seats. She grabbed on a Minoru Kawa and began to forcibly drag him back to his table. Oh, it's too late for that. Giving into his anger, Minokara threw a punch at the troublemaker. Okay, just calm down, Minokara did his best to swallow his pride. Whatever, he huffed. I don't have time for this anyway. He stalked back to his seat. The other man snorted and sat down with the scout. If we would have gotten a fight, we would have missed the deadline. The needless interruption just went, just when he'd finally gotten into right in the mood and all about killed Minokara's motivation. He decided he needed to take a breather. He turned to the waitress. One spaghetti Napoleon, please. Napoleon. 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 Oh, that's the same thing Aichi ordered. So it's just spaghetti. He might not have a lot of spare time, but working on an empty stomach wouldn't do him any favors. It sure won't. 
While waiting for his order to come out, he decided to read back over the copy he'd written so far. Bro? When he looked back at the monitor, the screen was black yet again. Looking down at his feet, he saw that the power cable was now unplugged. What kind of cafe are you people running here? He shouted. The witches hurried over, looking combative. Sir, you yanked that out yourself when you stood up earlier. What? A likely story. It's the truth, sir. Mirakar pointed at one of the customers sitting next to him. Is she telling the truth? Did I really yank my power cord out myself? <laughs> the man nodded sheepishly. Yeah, well, then, that's the outlet's fault for being someplace where it unplugs so easily. The waitress marched away, head held high. Just make sure that spaghetti's delicious. Do that, and I'll consider us even. Oh, and load it with cheese. Lots of cheese. You plug this power cable back in, and let out a heavy sigh. And all his riding fervor, Hadn't he thought to save his work? Uh-oh. Always make sure to save your work to avoid losing data. Oh boy, that's true. Honestly, why is it that your computer only seems to freeze when you've forgotten to save your stuff? Isn't that the truth, guys? Think about it. Even playing the game, the game will freeze up or crash. Only you have forgotten to save. Thank God for auto saves, right? He was probably going to have to rewrite most of what he'd done. Excuse me. Mikara looked up to see a young woman standing there. I'm so sorry, she said, about my father. She gave a tiny bow. Your father? Oh, the rude old man. He's just a little worked up right now. Please don't pay him any mind. So what, you waiting on your boyfriend? Huh? The woman was taking him back. I happened to hear you two arguing earlier. Would have been about two hours ago. Oh, I see. An awkward, embarrassing smile came to the woman's face. I thought he was going to ask my father for permission to marry me, so we've been waiting for him, but but he hasn't shown up. No. He must be really busy. She cast her eyes down sadly. When her car took a better look at her, she was gorgeous. The woman with her looks wasn't something he saw every day, that was for sure. Say. Would you mind talking with me for a bit? He asked. Me? Yeah. I kind of need to turn my mood around here. Well, uh, okay. At least until my father gets back. I'm going to cast an anxious look toward the restrooms. What's your name? Rumi. <laughs> Wait a second. Aren't you? Mirakar appeared at Rumi's face. One of those twins that was chosen at Miss Minoyama. Rumi shook her head. No, not me. No? Darn. Didn't think it'd be that lucky. Take a sip of his now cold coffee. I do know the girls you're talking about, though. Oh! Minokara spat out his coffee in surprise. Rumi squeaked, squeaked in alarm as the spray spat out of her face. Minokara leaned in, unconcerned. You mean it? You really know him? Yes, Rumi replied. You're, you're talking about Osawa twins, right? She got out a handkerchief and wiped the coffee from her face as she spoke. Osawa, huh? And Rukara glanced down at the project proposal on the table. Sexy Square, twins share top prize at local university beauty contest. Minuyama Academy, Maria and Hitomi Osawa. Yes, that's it, Osawa twins. I actually won Miss Morianama myself a few years ago. This year, I served as one of the judges. Hmm. Minori Kawa adopted the self-satisfied pose. Guess I really was born under the right sign to be a freelancer. The, the leads just come to me. Uh, sure, Rumi muttered. Okay, let's talk basics then. 
Tell me what you know about these girls. Well, I don't really know them personally. But now that you ask, I do remember hearing that they entered the contest separately. Mm. Wait, separately? Now, me and Carol was a bit confused. Yes, that's right. I assume they entered as a pair, but apparently not. I wonder why. I mean, they're twins. Don't they look alike? Wear the same clothes, everything together, and say the same things at the same time and stuff. Remy chuckled and looked at her head. Shook her head. No, not at all. Besides, these two aren't identical. They're fraternal twins. Twins who were born at the same time from two eggs that were fertilized separately. Fraternal twins do not share the same genetic information. They can differ in such characteristics as sex and blood type. Though... There are cases of fraternal twins resembling one another almost as closely as identical twins. Maria had told me I saw it happen to look very closely alike, but they do not have the same blood type. Although, at a glance, they do look very similar. Still, how should I put this? They both give off a very different impression. Oh, now that sounds interesting. Mind explaining what you mean? Minora Carol, I hope it isn't. Mm. Sound is strange, excuse me. I talked to them briefly after the awkward ceremony. The old sister struck me as really energetic, but the younger sister was more quiet and reserved. Minora Carol's investigative senses were tingling. I wouldn't figure a shy girl would want to enter a campus beauty contest. I suppose not. No. Mm, yeah. I don't suppose you've got anything juicier, Minokawa asked. Rumi frowned. Would you like to just go ask them yourself, she said. They don't live very far from here. Whoa, hold the phone. Minokawa could hardly believe what he had just fallen to his lap. The advanced info in the project proposal had mentioned the girls were students at Midoriyama, but hadn't given an actual address. If you could talk to them directly, now that would be a pay dirt. You know where they live? Well, not exactly. I just heard that they lived in Shoto. Ah, Shoto. That wasn't far away. Far a motorcycle could get there in about 10 minutes. It'd be quicker than going to Midoriyama Academy, and he'd be able to meet the girls themselves. Mirakai kind of flashed a quick look toward the restroom. It looked like Rumi's father had just gotten back. Sorry, she said. I should be getting going. No problem, and thank you. And we gave him a quick nod and hurried back to her seat. Mirakai kind of grabbed the dictionary from the public phone and flipped through the pages. Surprised, there were only five listings to the name Osawa with a dress and showed him. It was neither a Maria nor a Hitomi, but he hadn't expected there to be. He needed to find their parents. Wasting no time, he called up the first Osawa on the list. Bingo. Mirror Carl couldn't help but pump his fist in excitement. He got in the right place on his first try. Way to go, me. He committed the house number. Listed in the phone book to memory. Just then the waitress reappeared with a disgruntled expression of Mirror Carl's order of spaghetti. Napoleon. Uh, Napolitian, whatever the heck. <clears throat> Here you are, sir. Oh. It was piled high with an impressive mound of grated cheese. Almost looked like a miniature mountain of snow. You did say lots of cheese, sir. Which, which told me. <clears throat> she 
sat she sat down a canister of cheese and a bottle of Tabasco. Oh, this looks good. He throws some spaghetti out with his fork and shoved it into his mouth. The slightly sour sweetness of the ketchup blended perfectly with the mellow flavor of the cheese. Oh, that's tasty. There's nothing like satisfying grub to lift the spirits. Turn back to his laptop. Still walking down the spaghetti. All right. And again, he unthinkingly blurred his words aloud as he slipped back into writing mode. I've got this, I've got this. Ketchup smeared around his mouth, set his fingers tapping away at the key. The waitress set out another groan of dismay. Huh? You say something? And your car glanced in her direction, but the waitress faked a smile. No, sir, I didn't think so. Indignation. Nothing, sir. Good luck with all your work, sir. I don't need luck. I've got this. I was jumping back and forth between pasta and computer. When your car got to his work on his copy once more. For long, he was oblivious to every sound in the cafe around him. Father snapped in a writing mode. He glanced at his watch. It was 2.20. Almost time for him to head to his next interview. Better get a move on. Kimizuka's taxi came by just as Mirakawa was hurried, hurrying out of the cafe. Well, what a pleasant surprise. Nice timing, my man. Kimizuka's startled look quickly vanished behind an expression of professional resignation. You need a ride, sir. You know it. Hit the Shoto. After that, I'll need to get to Tartan Diner. As he casts his gaze out at the side sights of the city, Minokara mold over his plan for the next part of the day. First, he'd interview the I'd like to get to this all wrapped up in 20 minutes, he said. Can you make that happen? Kimizuka flashed a grin. That will incur a special fare, sir. Oh, special, Minokawa said as he got settled in his seat. 
I love that word. Kimizuka stepped on the gas. Shibuya was a town of contrasts. It was a town of young people, unpreten unpretentious, energetic, scramble intersection. The center guy perfectly conveyed that vibrancy. However, if one turned to right at the 109 building and headed down Funakamura Dora, the town's whole atmosphere changed. Shoto was one of Shibuya's, indeed one of Tokyo's most upscale residential districts. Wherever one looked, there were stately manor houses giving off an imposing air, sending the message that this was no place for the common folk. Right here is fine. Minokawa directed Kimizuka to pull over. Wait here for me. I'll be right back. Hopping out of the taxi, he checked with the nameplates of the nearby homes. Ah, right, here we go. He spied a nameplate that read Osawa. Kenji Osawa, huh? The name nagged him somehow. It had been in the back of his mind ever since he'd seen it in the phone book back at the cafe. He'd heard it someplace before. Walked up to the gate and pressed the button for the intercom. Even the little chime it made when the press sounded elegant. Mary Carl waited, but there was no response. He looked at his watch. It was 2.30 now. His interview with Shinosuke Oraria of the Morning Angels was supposed to have started already. Still, he wanted to meet with the twins first, if it was possible. He had to make a choice. He decided to wait a little bit longer. He decided to give up and head to his next interview. Um. Let's see. I mean, they're not there. Oh, well, I have to come back later. Grim looking man emerged, heading to another. Heading another man in handcuffs. Mirror Carl was standing in their way. Pardon us, Sears Aiken Fellow said. Gave Mirror Carl a curt bow as he passed by. I smell the distinct odor of scoop. Hey, does that guy live here? The man ignored him and kept moving. The miracle I followed. He couldn't let his opportunity pass him by. Hey, wait up. Is that Mr. Osawa? The grimace, the man pushed Minokara aside and hurried his handcuff prisoner along. Why is he in handcuffs? We'll find out soon enough. We play his story arc for a moment. Minokara wondered if he should keep after them. But he decided against it. Whatever was going on here, he doubted he'd be able to get an interview with the twins right now. So it had been an unfortunate waste of time. He had no real choice but to head along to the next interview. A few minutes later, the retired skidded sharply as the cab came to a stop beside a different curb. The trip from Shoto to the theater in uh, Sakura, Gaso Sakura Goa, Goka had taken almost no time at all. Here we are, sir. Wow, that was fast. Still, Mirakara was at least five minutes behind schedule. He hoped he'd still be able to get to the interview area. Peep out, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, do me a favor and drop a like and subscribe to the channel and the series grow. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace.